Wow, the year is over, now we're starting again. So now we're all the way back to the beginning of the Bible. We'll do a few different lessons each time as we go through. So last time we were in Genesis, we talked a bit about creation. We're going to do again, we're going to look at the six days of creation. Did you know that God created the world in six days? He could have done it a lot quicker, couldn't he? If he wanted to. He could have done it in six seconds. And why did he do it in six days? Do you know why? Six days? And then what did he do on the seventh day? What did he do on the seventh day? He rested. So why did he do it in six days plus the seventh day he rested? Does anyone know why? What do you think? <laughs> oh no, I put you on the spot there. Well, he did it because we have how many days in a week? Seven. Seven days in a week. So he gave us a pattern, didn't he? So now we have, because God created the world in seven days, well, we have seven days in the week, don't we? To give us a pattern of the week. Because if he did it in six seconds, that would be a really quick week, wouldn't it? The weeks would just be going by really quickly. <laughs> no, but he did it in six days, and then on the seventh day, he rested. So we're going to talk about today... What did God do on each of the days when he created the world? Do you guys know? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So day one, we'll come back to these pictures and give you an idea. Day one, day two, day three, day four is to give you a bit of a clue on what God created on that day. Day five, oh, look at this, some interesting animals in here, aren't they? And day six. So what's day one? Genesis 1, verse 3. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So not only that, he, in, the very, obviously in the very beginning, he created the heaven and the earth. So that's what this picture represents. He created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And God said, let there be light. All right, so then now there's light on the earth that is without form and void. Now what happened... On day two, we'll look at one verse from day two. Genesis chapter one, verse six. And God said, now notice when we look at these verses, these verses always start with this, doesn't it? And God said, isn't that amazing that God can just speak and then things get made? Don't you wish you, don't you, wish you could do that sometimes? Maybe you just would like to say, let there be chocolate. And then it would just get made, wouldn't it? And then you wouldn't have to bug mommy and daddy for chocolate. You can just make things yourself. Let there be, I don't know. What do you think? Let there be what? Bow and arrow. Bow and arrow. I know you've been thinking about it. Imagine if you didn't have to make it with your hands, you had to buy it. Just say, let there be, and it's there. Well, that's what God can do. Isn't that amazing? God can just say something. Let there be light. And look at this. There was light. So imagine if you could just say, let there be bow and arrow. And there was a bow and arrow. <laughs> that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? But we don't have those powers, but God does. Day two. Look at this. God said, again, so he's just talking. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So what is the firmament? What is that talking about? That's talking about the sky. That's talking about you know, the space and atmosphere. So day two, we also learn that he divided the sea from the water from the land put the firmament in the sky that's what happened on day two so that's will give you a bit of a bit of a, a visual now on what he made so there was let there be light he created the heaven and the earth this one is he separated the water from the earth and he created the firmament as well which is the sky and the heavens so the firmament is the sky as well as space that's that that's what firmament is okay now we get on to day three Oh, what's the clue here? What do you think? What do you think, Zephy? Land, yeah. So land is here. So yes, there's land in this picture. So you'll see in here, you've got the trees and everything, don't you? So that's what day three is about. Genesis 1, verse 11. Look at this. There's that word again. God said, see, as you're speaking, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree 
yielding fruit after his kind. Who likes to eat fruit? Oh, I like fruit too. Yes, yeah, so then God created them. Aren't you glad God created fruit? It's yummy, isn't it? So he created vegetables. Yeah, you don't like vegetables. Maybe some people hope God didn't make vegetables. But hey, vegetables are very good for you. Just like fruit is. So we've got the grass, the herb, the fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself. So even from the Bible we see that fruit has seeds upon the earth and it was so. So that's day number three. The trees, the grass, the herb, the fruit trees. What about day four? What's here? We've got the sun, the moon, and the stars. That's what was created on day four. Genesis 1.14, God said, look at this, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven. Remember we sang, my God is so big. And remember the, 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 the other part of the song where it says the stars are his handiwork too. Yeah. So God made those too. This is on day four. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. So you see how the lights, where do they sit? In the firmament. So this is how you know the firmament is the sky. To divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So how do you know it's daytime? Afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah, before, it's before afternoon. So isn't it interesting that the daytime is before noon? But how do you know it's day? Because when the sun is up. How do you know when it's night time? Sun is down. The moon comes up. So you see, this is why God created these things. So we can tell the days, seasons, signs, let them be for signs and for days and for years. So that's day four. So that's the moon, sun, and then we got stars, don't we? Now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Kids love these animals, don't you? We've got the birds. Look at these. What are these? Pterodactyls. Do you know what this one is? Who knows what this one is? Fiona? Dinosaur. dinosaur? Yeah, this is a plesiosaur, isn't it? You've got big whales. Well, that's what happened on day five. Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature. That's these things. Okay? That hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open. Look at this word again. Firmament, it's the sky of the heaven. So that's day five. And day six, what did he create here? Simon, what do you think? Yeah, there's man as well, yes. And also the other land animals, isn't it? And look, what's this one here? There are little lizards on the floor. And what does the Bible call them? Little creeping things. They could be like lizards. Guinea pigs, you think about little things that creep along the floor, insects, things like that. Genesis 1, 24, and God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, look at this, creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. So we got all the animals created on day six, and then finally, so Simon, you knew, God created man in his own image. Again, look, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. What is this? Dominion means you have authority, power over the fish, right here, fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, whoops, fowl of the air, look at this, and over all the earth, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So what did God do when he created man? He said he created man in his own image, and he gave man authority over all the animals that he created, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and all the beasts of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth. Okay? So those are the six days of creation. And then on the seventh day... God looked at all his work and he said, Behold, it's very good. You know, he rested on the seventh day. So let's recap. Earth, created heaven and the earth. And then he said, Let there be light. Day two, he separated the earth from the seas, created the firmament, which is the sky and the heavens. 
And then day three, what did he create? The grass, the herbs, the fruit trees on day three. Then day four, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Isn't that interesting? You see how light was created before the sun? Did you know that? So when we think of the light, we think, oh, the light is coming from the sun. But do you know light is actually something separate? God created light first. And then he created the sun to then be the source of that light. So we have the sun, the moon, the stars. Day five, the fowl of the, of the sky and the fish of the sea. Day six, you have the land animals, right? With the dinosaurs as well here, the creeping things. And finally, he created man and woman. And then on the seventh day, he rested. All right, so I hope you learned something there. There's a bit of a visual of how the six days of creation played out. So we're going to go outside and we'll play a couple of games. I don't know, we'll play some games or maybe we'll just go and muck around on the playground. Or we'll go for a bit of a walk and we'll go and uh, look, at, look at God's creation. <laughs>